Hey, everybody. Welcome to the weekly Baseball Brew Crew podcast. We're keeping baseball history alive one craft beer at a time. Wherever you are watching or listening to us, give us a like and a follow. And if you love beer with your baseball, please tell a friend. Here is a lineup card for today. Let's get to it. We have a full house today. Returning to the leadoff spot is our VP of content development here at the Baseball Brew Crew. It is Angelo Trinidad. Welcome from the Lone Star State. Yes, greetings from the Lone Star State. I have my Frisco Rough Riders hat here. And it is, um, as we're recording, it is almost 9 p.m., but the sun is still out. And and your internet's great. You were actually, you didn't have internet for a long time. So uh, that's fantastic. Crystal clear. Chris, yeah, and at t was here this morning, so I have fiber installed, and I am good to go. Ooh, yeah. Look at Let's you. Go. Look at you, braggadocious. Walking <laughs> in tall cotton right there, Bubba. Hey, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a far cry from uh, living in the Stone Ages the last couple months that I've been here. So I bet. I know what that's like. I've I did that for centuries. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's only had internet for 1% of his life. <laughs> True story. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's generous. A 1%. I appreciate it. Yes, yes. I'm not very good at math, uh, but Hey, let's give a proper introduction to our field correspondent and senior research analyst at the baseball brew crew. Kevin Lyon. Welcome. It's good to be here. Good to be in the second bang second. It makes me feel no, you know, just have to go in, take it easy. Let Angel just get on first base or if he gets, you know, hit with a pitch, I'm just going to be up and ready and I'll be fresh. The pitcher will be ready to go. And as opposed to nervous starting off the game. Yes. Yeah, so you get to, good to be here. A couple pitches that there you brother, go. Brother, I got three kids. I went a lot farther than first base. <laughs> <laughs> Boom shakalaka. <laughs> oh, up next is our Goodwill Ambassador and the Sultan of Swig at the Baseball Brew Crew. It is Cowboy Jack Durango. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the Baseball Brew Crew proudly brings to you the Golden God, Jackie Ballgame, the great Sasuke's close personal friend, the man with a voice built for radio and a face built for the big screen, leaving a screen of a string of broken hearts and broken bracks across the globe it is cowboy jack durango let him hear it yes wow wow we man every week when he does his intro i gotta remember to just i i gotta add more nicknames to what what the the, the great sausage is your friend Close personal friend, yes. Sir. Close personal friend. Okay. If if All Instagram right. is to be believed, close personal friend. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> I'll add that name to your list then. Don't worry. Yes. Uh, I love it. Well, thank you all for being here. My name is Michael Mondragon, your humble host for the festivities tonight. And as tradition on the show, we always bring a new and unique craft beer to review and enjoy. So what craft beer are you drinking tonight? I'm going to start with Kevin Lyon. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. It's clear. My craft hard seltzer for tonight is Musgrove Mango by Ashland out of San Diego, California. This one, like all the regular ones they make, comes in at 5% ABV, 100 calories, and gluten-free. What makes this special is this hard seltzer was made in collaboration with San Diego star pitcher Joe Musgrove. Cheers. Nice, nice. And, uh, you know, we actually have a video. Maybe we should take a look at the video before uh, you go into more description on this one. Go for it. As a part owner in Ashland, I was very excited when Josh brought the idea to me to come up with this mango flavor. And, you know, playing in a city like San Diego, there was a lot of ties back to my childhood. You know, after travel ball games on the weekends, going down to the corner and grabbing the corn on the cob or a fresh mango on a stick with some chili powder. And that's kind of what this reminds me of a little bit. And, you know, I kind of picture people at the ball games in the middle of the summer cracking open a ice cold mango seltzer, you know, taking it to the beaches. It just feels like the perfect drink for me and for San Diego. So swing by the, the gas station, swing by the grocery store, pick you up a pack. You know, maybe we'll cross paths on the way and uh, crack one open together. And 
and I'll say, yeah, the, the mango is pretty subtle. So, and it's it's pretty it's a pretty nice refreshing drink. It's it was a little it's getting a little warm out now, a little bit warmer than it has been here in Southern California. Not like Arizona heat, but yeah, you know, I figure you can just go somewhere and just chill and drink one of these. So obviously, I don't really drink seltzers that often, but I see a baseball player directly affiliated where there's even a commercial of him in there. Yeah, had to go and try it. And um, so Ashland exclusively makes hard seltzer. Uh, they're out of San Diego. They use all natural ingredients in the brewing process. So as long as a hard seltzer with no sugar, no fat, less than one gram of carbs, uh, malt-free and gluten-free, without standing taste and purity. So they just use natural flavoring because they have a lot of different flavors that they made. And um, Angelo and I, had, before, we talked about having something with called the Bellinger Bomb made for Cody Bellinger on the Dodgers then. Now he's on the Chicago Cubs. And that one was actually uh, cherry, lime, and blue raspberry. They still make that one. Um, you can find it, but just about the Bellinger name on it. What I did know also was they made a second Bellinger one called the Bellinger Stick. And this actually was cherry pineapple and it was actually 8%. That's the only time I've ever seen an Ashland that was higher than five. So it seems like they have a, a pretty specific base that they use for everything. Because like I said, everything's pretty much 5%, gluten-free, 100 calories. So I'm like, hey, that's cool. I can drink... 20 of these and build my, you know, 2000 calorie diet. Right. Or, or <laughs> yes. Yeah. Am, am I the only one now after that commercial that is anxiously awaiting the street corn seltzer that Joe Musgrove <laughs> <laughs> alluded to? <laughs> Don't tease me, big Joe. Don't oh, yeah. tease me. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah. If yeah. you like seltzers and it, you know, you know, we just love baseball. You don't have to be a Padre fan. I, mean, I found this at Trader Joe's in Orange County. So, you know what I mean? That's like a good 50, 60 miles at minimum from San Diego. You know, we're just all about supporting a good independent company. And especially if there's a baseball player involved, heck yeah. Cheers to Joe Musgrove and cheers to Ashland. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's something that we we probably don't even do it. Like whenever we see the hard seltzers, you know, we, we probably pass on them only because there are so many great craft beers out there that we enjoy. So, uh, this, this one may get me into that. I remember there, wasn't there like a Clayton Kershaw one also? That, that was, was, um, beer? an actual beer. Oh, uh, was it, was it like a shandy? I can't remember the name of the beer off the top of my head, but it was like a, like a, it was like a grapefruit beer, if I remember correctly. I have okay, to do okay. research. I can do the research while you maybe ask uh, someone else about their beer, if you want. Yeah, well, I, I also wanted to, to uh, make mention also that uh, much like we were talking about Johan Santana last week mm -hmm. being the first uh, Met uh, no-hitter, uh, no-hitting pitcher, um, Joe Musgrove uh, threw the very first no-hitter for mm -hmm. the San Diego Padres. That's right. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it took a long time for them to, to get it all together. But um, but I, I definitely would like to check this one out. And I know yes. that uh, Angelo uh, had the the belly bomb. And, yes, and, he did. Uh, and I tried so, that as well. Yeah. Oh, you, you're right. And, I had and, as well. But I know Angelo had on the show. So um, to go back to the Kershaw thing, there was a brewery called Buzz Rock. And it was called Kershaw's Wicked Curve. And it was a grapefruit wheat ale. I don't know if they still produce it because I think I would have had on the show. Actually, I saw it on the street. I saw it down oh, the street. Oh, because it's still being made. Right on. Yeah, it's still being made. So. And something interesting is happening with Ashland, and I don't, and I didn't get a chance to read this article, but um, we very recently, like in the last month, they com they combined ownership with a company called Dinkasi out of mm. Oregon and a couple other breweries, and it looks like that's going to start to be a thing now to maybe help these smaller craft breweries get more distribution. What I think would be the main reason is to kind of unify with other breweries in their area or whatever would pique their interest in combining interesting thing I saw going on there. Yeah. Well, it makes sense because then, because not everybody loves beer, but then there's other uh, outlets for people that don't enjoy yeah. beer as much and hard seltzers are definitely super popular right now. Um, and, uh, but who couldn't be a fan of this? If you uh, walked into a, a <laughs> supermarket <laughs> and saw this, like I, I'd be taking a few out of there. As well. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Super, super cool stuff. So uh, thank you, Kevin, for that. That's a, that's a really good one. Uh, hopefully when I'm in San Diego uh, this weekend, uh, maybe uh, I can. You uh, maybe find a draft somewhere, but you, you should be able to find that somewhere. Like I said, if I found a Trader Joe's in Orange wow. County, you'd probably find one. You might be able to find one at Trader Joe's by you. That's true. That's true. So I'll definitely be on the lookout for that. Cowboy Jack, you are up next. 
The craft brewery that I will be speaking about tonight is Lake Pleasant Brewing Company in Phoenix, Arizona. This brewery is a family-friendly neighborhood brewery that specializes in Charlie Guzzle's favorite type of craft beer, the Hazy IPA. Lake Pleasant has five, count them, one, two, three, four, five variations of Hazy IPAs on tap at all times to enjoy while you play arcade games, foosball, or enjoy a treat from the various food trucks they provide to Thursday through Monday night. So check this out, fellas. They have a 6.9% 30 IBU double dry hopped hazy IPA named Pleasantly Hazy, a 4.6 ABV 20 IBU session hazy that is dangerously sessionable, sessionable named The Idle Haze, an 8.2 percenter. We call that one a breakfast beer in the old Durango household. Yeah. It's a double hazy named the Hopsy Wopsy and an 8.5 percenter. That's more of a brunch beer. We call that one the full throttle double hazy IPA hopped up GMC. Now, the one that's going to keep the hop king coming back for more is the Cosmic Juice Hazy IPA. It's only a 7.5 percenter, but it hits all the notes that you want out of a citrusy, juicy, hazy IPA. And to my great surprise, they brew it with oats and lactose. Didn't know they were throwing lactose in hazies, but hey, daddy likey. You know what I mean? Now, don't fret. They aren't just brewing hazies. They have all the bases covered on the craft beer ball field with stouts, blondes, Irish reds, Mexican ambers, wheat beers, and dunkles. So when you pay the nice folks a visit at Lake Pleasant Brewing Company, don't forget to let them know that John Cena's favorite craft beer and baseball podcaster and the Valley of the Sun's favorite son, Cowboy Jack Durango, sent you. Love it. Love it. No, isn't Lake Pleasant? Isn't um, isn't that um, a lake that's up north, like uh, Canyon Lakes up there? Lake Pleasant, people would go. That's the more popular one. But uh, am so, I correct? Yeah. On that? Lake Pleasant is north of where I sit, Peoria, Arizona. It's about a thirty minute drive north, so it's northwestern Phoenix. You can get to it in a day. It's beautiful. I think twice this year I've been out with the fam. You rent a boat, hang out drink some hazies. Uh, but interesting, interestingly enough, Lake Pleasant Brewing Company isn't located at Lake Pleasant. <laughs> They're yeah. actually located uh, northern Phoenix, a little suburb called Deer Valley, Arizona, right mm -hmm. down the street from the Deer Valley Airport. So not a lot of water around, but uh, I think the ultimate goal is to have a location at Lake Pleasant. And with those hazies, they can go anywhere, buddy. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, and because there's also like Lake Havasu is the one that's uh, the the super popular one that that's uh, I that, think yeah I'm that's not to anymore. <laughs> yeah, that that that's where we would go in uh, in uh, spring break when we were yes. a bunch of dumb kids. Yeah. Yes. And that's where MTV picked uh, to have a lot of their stuff in the 90s as well. Uh, and I definitely wouldn't want to go there too. Oh, and, and actually a added fun fact. Um, my father bought a, uh, a Cessna little airplane. Uh, oh. And it was, uh, where did he put it? A Deer Valley Airport. Oh, that, is a, is. A, that, that is a fun fact that no one cares about. Uh <laughs> Not even you. You don't, don't even care about that. <laughs> I'm just like, why are you buying a plane? What are you, stupid? Um, <laughs> 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 we Definitely. never went in it. We, we literally never flew in it. But that's that's a whole childhood uh, trauma thing that, uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, 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 it's fine. I'll continue eating the corm Hormel chili out of the can. You have fun with your Cessna. <laughs> yeah. You go get oh, your yeah. pilot's license and have fun. Bye-bye. Um, anyway, uh, that's, that's a whole different story. I can't believe that the Lake Pleasant Brewing Company brought that out of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, so yeah, I mean, well, welcome to the baseball brew crew where we specialize in deep traumatic childhood therapy. Michael, how you doing today? I'm doing great. And, uh, uh, oh, it, it, oh no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> yeah, more much further. Um, uh, but no, this is awesome. Uh, definitely. Um, do you know exactly what the cross streets of this are in Phoenix? It's, uh, ro let's just call it, let's just call it for, for, to make it easy. 19th Avenue in Deer Valley. Gotcha. 
Gotcha. Perfect. It's it's in an industrial park. Um, it's big open space, foosballs, arcade games. If you're in the neighborhood and you need you need to get the kids quieted down, they have lunch tr- they have lunch trucks show up every night. Get the kids fed, let them play some foosball, and uh, knock back a uh, knock back a hazy or two so that you can deal with it. Love or it. seventeen if you're Jack. Yes. Or seventeen. <laughs> well, I listen. It, I don't go there for breakfast, so <laughs> all right. okay, fair. Yeah. That's it, it, it'd be around forty-two. You know, all right. Yeah, no. Fair point. I, fair point. <laughs> 42 is the answer to everything. I know that. <laughs> oh, look at that. All right. So my craft beer for tonight is the Story Walking Double Dry Hopped Hazy IPA by Monkish Brewing out of Torrance, California. It's a 7% ABV, no IBU listed. This beer is double dry hopped India Pale Ale with Galaxy, Citra, and Mosaic Hops. This is a variation of their double IPA called Bomb Atomically. So uh, Kevin and I were hopping around uh, on Sunday, uh, a segment we'll we'll do right after this. Uh, But we stopped in at one of our favorite breweries. Uh, Again, uh, I'll tell you more about it when when in our hopping around segment. But uh, this is one of the first uh, breweries uh, when I went to when I first got into craft beer. We went to a whole bunch of them, like in Carson and Torrance. Uh, there was uh, Strand. There was um, Smog City. But Monkish was the one that blew my mind. Like, I didn't even know. Like, I knew beer, but this was like, this is what beer can be. Oh, my God. If you're ever in Torrance, California, if you're ever in Anaheim, we were actually at their their beer garden uh, in Anaheim that just started. How, Kevin, what, how long ago did that start? They would have opened about a year or so ago. And okay. uh, like right there. Well, we could talk about we hopping around, but there's other spots in the area as well. But they were yeah. opened up about a year or so ago. Yeah, but this this one, it, it was this one. Again, it reminded me because we were like we were walking around. We were actually going to do go to some other places and we wound up, you know, and we said, like, let's just go to Monkish because we know that we're going to get treated right and we're going to have some good beer. And boy, we were not wrong at all. Uh, This one is so outstanding. If uh, again, we were super into the hazies. And if you look at that, like, oh, it's like perfect. It's perfectly creamy. It's uh, it's got that hop, but it's. And again, it's it's brewed recently, so it's super super fresh, Love and uh, I, and I, I, and I do and I do like you mentioned it's um, you said it's a variation of the uh, bomb uh, atomically because I had yeah. that there actually I looked a little over a year ago in May of 2023, 2022, I had that beer, so yeah. the minute I'll, to put this over the the second Michael tried it, I started to sit and he's just like. This is the next, this is next level beer. Easy, easy. I go, this is why we came here. This right here. Yeah. This is outstanding. And um, yeah, and we'll, we'll go, we'll more, go into more with it in our hopping around segment. But yes, if you're ever near, uh, you know, Anaheim or Torrance, California, please look up Monkish Brewing. You will not be disappointed uh, in every single beer that you have from now. All right, so let's do it. This is This Week in Baseball History for June 20th through 26th. Uh, Angelo, I'm going to start with you. June 20th, 2004, on Father's Day, with his dad in attendance, 34-year-old Ken Griffey Jr. blasts a sixth-inning Matt Morris fastball over the right field wall at Bush Stadium for his 500th career home run. The red center fielder becomes the 20th major leaguer and the sixth youngest to reach the milestone. So, yeah, guys, you, you, you guys know Ken Griffey Jr. is my all-time favorite baseball player. So um, it was super awesome to be able to to share this moment in baseball history with uh, with you guys here today. Yeah. So, Angelo, 2004, Did you uh, were you watching this game uh, on the old telly? I was not watching this game on the old telly, but what I will tell you is, so I was did a little bit of research here. So Ken Griffey Jr. played for the Reds from 2000 to 2008, so for eight years. So he's most known for his time with the Seattle Mariners, where he spent 11 seasons of his 21 season or almost 21 season career. Um, but the other half he spent primarily with the Reds, a cup of coffee with the White Sox, 
back to the Mariners uh, f- before his retirement. But uh, no, I was not watching this game on the telly in t- June 2004. Um, I w- had just moved to Southern California. So um, I don't know what I was doing on this day. But uh, and, and honestly, Jack, this is still 2004 where not every single game, you know, you, I don't even, I don't think the season ticket was a, was a thing then, was it? Michael, you would know more than I would. Well, I was just going to say, I was watching this game because, yes, actually, oh. it actually goes back yeah. that far. It's uh, wow, that. Major League okay. Baseball, actually, their their um, technology like was so ahead of everybody's okay. NBA, NHL, yeah. anybody's oh, okay. at the NFL, too. Yeah, I do remember that this was like, I guess, simulcast this every at bat of this oh, game yeah. or something, or the For games sure. leading up. The 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 sim- yeah, they simulcast it in no matter what the broadcast was because of this historic milestone. Um, and, you know, again, we're kind of on the, the backside of his career here uh, when he hits his 500th home run. Um, so, you know, definitely an established uh, Hall of Famer prior to achieving this accomplishment, uh, but really solidified his case of being one of baseball's all time greats. Because one thing that a lot of people fail to remember in the home run chase in 1998, Ken Griffey Jr. was actually um, in that conversation and in that battle for the first almost two thirds of the season until Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa really ran away with it. So there's a, a ESPN 30 for 30 document uh, documentary about it. Um, and they talk about Ken Griffey Jr. A lot in that documentary as well. Cause I mean, obviously influential as a power hitter, influential just um, with his swagger and his style. Um, I started wearing my hat backwards because of Ken Griffey Jr. Much like most teenagers and most kids uh, growing up watching Ken Griffey. So one of the all-time greats, solidified Hall of Famer, but um, a great career accomplishment to hit 500 with his dad in attendance on Father's Day, no less. Yeah, it was almost kind of like one of those. Uh, it, th- there's times when they're like, I feel like there's staged moments in baseball. Sure. Like I mm-hmm. felt like this one was, you know, Ken Griffey's dad's in the audience. It's Father's Day, I, and if I'm not mistaken, he hit either in the first or second at bat. You may you might check that, but I I think it was it was like almost too perfect. It was like yeah. after um, uh, what's his name Fernandez died and uh, D uh, D Gordon hit like yep. he never hits home runs. He hit a home yep. run and. Oh. in Miami, those type of, oh, or even the, like the no hitter that you were oh. at. Yeah. It was like one of those, it felt like a stage moment, but it was like, it, again, that's what the beauty of baseball. It's all and, work, not, brother. <laughs> and not the first uh, moment that uh, King Griffey Jr. shared with his father, as far as momentous occasions as they both home hit home runs in the same game. So that's right. That's right. They, they actually have a lot of, a lot of cool moments together for huh. sure. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know his. I didn't know his dad played baseball too. That's wild, man. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> I'm sure his dad would love to hear that. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, well, hopefully, Ken Griffey Senior is watching and just shaking his head. Yes. Yes. I, yeah. uh, he he loves me. <laughs> Wait, All right, see. Kevin, you're up next. All right, we're going to June 21st, 1964, on Father's Day at Shea Stadium. Jim Bunning pitches the first regular season perfect game since 1922. He also becomes the first pitcher to throw no hitters in both leagues and drives in two runs as the Phillies beats the Mets six to nothing. Bunning is the sole major league baseball athlete to have been elected to both the United States Senate and the national baseball hall of fame. Nice. And so Kevin, uh, this is what, just to tell everybody, this is how big baseball nerds we are. When Kevin and I were driving home from Reno for our hopping around at the Reno Aces, we actually listened to this entire game uh, wow. on a radio broadcast. And uh, Kevin goes, "Oh, I have a I have a game we're gonna listen to, and you tell me what you think it is." And it's um, it was Jim Bunning's uh, no hitter. Uh, it was yeah, this day. Yeah. Um, for everyone who wants to just, it's it's not just the baseball. There's so much more than just the game itself. It's a a YouTube channel called Classic Baseball on the Radio. But what the beauty of this was, maybe even better, is there's commercials and there's like the announcers reading commercials and there's like songs. The songs there's a, these crazy songs in between each half innings as the commercial breaks and Michael and I are just like dying hearing these songs, you know, you know, like meet the Mets and all those kind of things, which is like, what the heck is happening here? Yeah. And Hey, let's give a cheers 
to the beer that is as good to your taste as as it is to your thirst, Rheingold. Yes. There you go. There was a was, lot of Rheingold spots in that in that Mets game too on the that's right. That's right. They're a huge sponsor of uh, of Mets baseball and yes. really, uh, yeah, and also some top brass medicated hair uh, dressing. Dressing uh, like what? Hair dressing. I love all those signs and and uh, those signs are the uh, actually that that are speaking of all that. It really like. That's why I love baseball because I used to see like those old uh, vintage things like uh, like the coffee, you know, it's, uh, you know, they had a big coffee cup on there and just all the, the Burma shave and all that stuff. Uh, just the stuff you don't see today, but they're all like uh, on the uh, on the walls. Uh, they're right. so cool. So cool. I, I actually want to make a uh, my, my goal in life at, you know, I'm in my 50s, but I, I still want to make this. I want to make a wiffle ball uh, stadium and put and make all those that signage uh, oh, on there. It'll great. happen. I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> that'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be super fun. I, and uh, and then we can all like uh, play one inning of wiffle ball, then uh, then relax for the rest of the day. Now I'm blown up. <laughs> yeah. Can me. I'm blown up. I'll be in the bar, boys. I'll be in the bar. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Super cool. Thank you, Kevin, for that one. Yep. All right, Jack, you're up next. June 22nd, 1982, in a perfect example of show me an athlete in a uniform that doesn't look like it belongs, the Phillies Pete Rose moves past Hammer and Hank Aaron into second place for career hits, when he doubles off Cardinals right-hander John Stuper for his 3,772nd hit. Charlie Hustle, who was 419 hits shy of Ty Cobb's record, will surpass the Georgia Peaches total in 1985 with his 4,192nd hit at Cincinnati's famous Riverfront Stadium. Nice. Anytime I see Pete Rose in a Phillies out, uh, uniform, I'm just like, what are we doing here, guys? This is, <laughs> this doesn't, uh, that, that, that mean, that man needs a C on his uniform and a C on his hat. This doesn't work for me. But hey, you know what? He did win a World Series with them. He did. He did. Yeah, sure. Of course World he series. did. He made a second, he made a second World Series, like 83, and they lost. And then, but you know what's even weirder? Him as an expo. That's still the weirdest yeah. one for sure. That's yeah. Like, the expo for sure. one. Yeah, the expo yeah. one breaks my brain a little bit. He I was can't. there, like it's like Reggie Jackson's an Oriole. It's like right. what that happened, right. and like I think you know, I think Pete Rose was an expo for like half a season. Yeah, yeah. It's like when I see Ken Griffey Jr. in a Mariners uniform, it just doesn't <laughs> like it's something. They just I, don't mesh. You know what I mean, right? Right, Kevin. Kevin, <laughs> can you hit the buzzer for me, please? <laughs> <laughs> the buzzer's the buzzer's always here. But the, oh, oh. <laughs> hate that. You meant White Sox. He actually, uh, uh, Ken Griffey Jr. Actually, uh, he was actually. Uh, there's there's a famous story of him um, at the end of his career. He's with the White Sox, and he's uh, he's actually <laughs> napping during mm -hmm. the game in the clubhouse. And uh, they actually asked him to come pinch hit, and he couldn't because he was uh, sleeping. And uh, they totally kayfabed it to like the press and everything, but it got out. And, uh, oh, but yeah, that was kind of a All right. was beginning of the end. <laughs> was he, was he sleeping or was he like brothered up sleeping? Like <laughs> oh, no. you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Like, uh, he just a cat nap. I think he just a cat. Just, nap. Okay. All right. <laughs> Not a Mari Gennetti nap. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Come on. All right. Uh, Kevin, you, uh, uh, actually, it it comes to me. I yes, I does. actually have the next one here. I am all over the place when it comes to my <laughs> notes here. Uh, but uh, yes, I will go next. All right, this is a fun one. June twenty third, nineteen seventeen. Boston Red Sox pitcher Babe Ruth walks leadoff man Eddie Foster for the Washington Senators. During the at bat, Ruth gripes to home plate umpire Brick Owens after every pitch. On ball four, Ruth and the umpire get into a physical confrontation, and the babe is ejected. In comes reliever Ernie Shore to pitch for Boston. The base runner, Foster, is caught stealing, and Shore retires all 26 men he faces in a 4 to nothing win. 
the game is considered a combined no hitter for Ruth and Foster. Now, you guys, uh, Cowboy Jack and Kevin, you guys did a hazy history, right? Yes, we did. If you go through the archives on our Instagram, we did a we went live and talked about this because it's just like this is so bizarre. Because wasn't it considered a perfect game for sure at first, or am I just misremembering things? Is that yeah, yeah, it, it was listed as a perfect game, but it, it's it can't it's be not. a perfect game, right? right. You walk, there's a walk in it, right? But still a no hitter, yeah, for sure. But yeah, so and he and and technically, um, Shore only faced twenty six batters, not twenty seven, which would be the perfect game. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, it's, it's yeah, it's combined no hitter. Gotcha. Now, just just imagine in the year of our Lord and Savior Taro, twenty twenty three, if one of the guys carrying the big stick, let's call it Otani, right? Otani, Judge, Judge can Judge Judge can whack some dingers. Imagine if Judge took a swing at a umpire. Like Babe Ruth is arguably the most recognizable base baseball player of all time, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's taken swings at umps. <laughs> I will add though, Jack, this was before his peak and in, in his in his in his fame. Sure. Because his fa his most famous would have been the 1920s when instead he took on Judge Kennesaw Mountain Landis. Right. Yes. You know, and what could have been a physical altercation, but luckily for the judge, it wasn't. Now, now what's not listed here is when he took a punch at said umpire, was the umpire wearing his face mask? Because that would be the true IQ test if you punched him and he was wearing his, wearing his mask. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I understand that it, it probably he took a, he took it off, but um, it's not it's not clarified here. I don't know if the if the boys in blue were wearing face masks in in 1917. Kevin, you were there. <laughs> Did umpires have face masks back then? I was probably too drunk. I didn't recall, but I believe so. <laughs> Hashtag do the research. Leave it to I'll leave it to the audience. Leave it to the audience. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a really fun one there. All right, Kevin, you're up next. All right, we're going to June 24th, 2016. The Lexington Legends, a Class A affiliate of the Kansas City Royals, give away a Glenn Hubbard bobblehead depicting him with a snake draped around his neck. Why, you ask? The former Braves infielder's 1984 Fleer baseball card with him posing, holding a real eight-foot boa constrictor inspired the minor league team's promotion. Yeah, this is this is a, a, a famous baseball card that that uh, I I never had, but I've seen it oh. a million times. Oh yeah, I did because you know I mean I I was buying these cards a lot when I was at Angel Games, but you know what? I mean, you know, obviously what happened next? The snake went and ate the Philly fanatic. For sure. That's definitely what happened. <laughs> Thankfully. Thankfully. All right, guys. My, I'm going to let my trailer park show a little bit. Did y'all ever have an uncle like this? Or was, <laughs> or was it me? I, I, I did, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, had, I, did too. I, I, had, I don't know if he was a blood uncle or not, but there was a dude growing up that was always around the trailer that looked just like this, carried a snake, but he would only drink Pabst Blue Ribbon, so. <laughs> yeah. Bear so those minus. First time I got arrested was hanging out with old Uncle Richard. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so he was he was a bit of an aristocrat. You're saying? Yes. <laughs> High society, brother. High society. Yes. Um, do we Glenn, have any? Do you have any idea what like what inspired this card to begin with? Like why? Because the game's in Philadelphia. The game's uh, even in Atlanta. You know apparently, I mean? Glenn Hubbard woke up and said, "I'm going to be awesome today." <laughs> <laughs> Somebody give me a snake and a mascot for the background. Let's do this. Yeah. So there, there's actually another baseball player, and he actually has th that picture has been on the Baseball Brew Crew podcast, probably in an earlier, uh, probably when it was still the uh, beer baseball broadcast. But so that that's how that's how far it was back. But there's another player who actually had a snake draped around him in a picture. Do you remember who it was? Uh, I oh, you know what, Heine Manoush. It was not Heine Manoush, but that oh, very good. Yeah, wonderful guess. Close, wonderful close. guess. 
anybody. It was actually a picture of Julio Franco. And when he oh. was uh, on the Cleveland, uh, the Cleveland legacies, I actually, uh, I actually censored uh, <laughs> that in, in the last uh, podcast. Uh, my, my, my indiscretion of actually uh, saying the legacy team name. I'm, I'm, I, and I apologize. And pretty soon um, we're going to have to say it for the, for this Atlanta team as well. Pretty <laughs> So Jack, you're not going to like the background of this. What I did find out. Oh. So apparently the re, um, he did. I guess he did was an outdoorsy guy. They did have snakes at his where he was living growing up. But apparently the story was it was the Philly Fanatics' birthday. He, they oh. never thought it was Zoo Day because they could sit there like, yeah, sure, I'll put the snake on, not realizing that was going to end up being his baseball card. Apparently he was pretty bitter about. It. A guy had a snake on the field, and I grabbed a photographer. And I said, "Hey, can I get my picture taken with this snake." And then he said, "So he put it around his neck." Got the picture taken. He sends me an eight by ten. That's all I know about it. And next thing I know, <laughs> top card gonna, it, or it FLIR card, yeah. a, a freaking yeah. The guy was a was a freelance photographer for FLIR. So he said he went Man. to spring training next year, and a kid comes up to him and says, "Hey, can you sign this?" And he was and apparently he was actually pretty upset about it at first. Really? You know, I don't know because mm. it was on a baseball card. I thought, you know, I'm a baseball card. I'm a baseball player. I thought they'd have to ask me, but anytime you're on the field in uniform, they can just do whatever they want. Wow. So there you go. Okay. I, mean, I guess he has softened up. He literally, apparently, if someone would send him the card in the mail for an autograph, he would send back another card. That really oh, that's wow. how bitter he was about this card at certain points. Yeah. Come on. Oh, wow. How, man, yeah, he really could have capitalized on that. Yeah, he could have. Just get a bur burlap sack and throw a throw a <laughs> snake in there and go around to all the old card shows. Kevin would have been there wanting to touch the snake. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Imagine yeah. trotting around the bases with a burlap sack over your shoulder. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you just yeah, leave I it in the he, trunk. You can just leave he, it in the yeah. trunk of the car during games. I mean, yeah, it's a snake. <laughs> sure, Who cares about not? snakes, dude? Yeah, he even said, I guess when people. He said uh, more recent recent years, I guess that whenever they ask him about it, he says, "Yeah, I still got the snake in my basement." So I, I, <laughs> so I was like, "Because apparently he was actually a coach in the Royal System, so I, he might have been a coach for these for this Lexington team when they did this." Oh, that I would yeah. be surprised if that mm, would if that be interesting too. Yeah, yeah, and so that yeah that I guess that's what he was a coach with the Lexington Legends when they did this giveaway. So uh, I figured the, I was gonna I, I had to look it up. I'm like, yeah, he has to be right. Yeah, so. <laughs> So we asked you know, they, they, even add, they made the beard even fuzzier. Look at that. They made it more like a Brian Danielson kind of like beard. Yeah. Beard. So they he actually had to relive this relive his past here. So that yep. that's you're telling me. Uh yeah. too bad. Too bad. All right. He could, he could have sold eight by tens of that for at least two bucks at the merch table. Yeah. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> that's for sure. That's for sure. All right, Jack, you're up next. June 25th, 2010, needing 149 pitches to accomplish the feat, Edwin Jackson no hits the Tampa Bay Rays at Tropicana Field with a final score of 1 to 0. The Diamondbacks right-hander walks eight batters and hits another in route to joining the big unit, Randy Johnson as the second pitcher in franchise history to throw a no-hitter. Yeah. yeah, you know, guys, when the MLB sends me that contract, the first thing I'm doing is changing my first name from Edwin to something else. Like, <laughs> can, can't you just go by Ed, Big Ed Jackson? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, Edwin Jackson. Like, yeah. sounds like a librarian throwing no hitters out there. Come on, well, well, we talked about him on the. We did talk about on the show previously another Edwin in baseball, Edwin Edwin Donald Snyder, known as Duke Snyder. So there you go. all of Fame well, see, Edwin. There see you go. he smartened up. He went by he, Duke. Like, yep, exactly. <laughs> he knew what to do. Yeah. And by that line, 149 pitches. How many walks did he have, Jack? Uh we eight, had walks, one, eight walks, one uh it, one. It sounds it better, sounds yeah. like he was hanging out with Doc Ellis the night before or something like that. What's <laughs> going on here? Jeez. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. 149 pitches. That's that's quite a lot. So I have to wonder um you know what you know what factored in. I mean, I know it's a no hitter, but you're gonna leave him in there to throw 149 pitches. And, and it's a one nothing game, too. It's like, oh my yeah. gosh. Clearly, people didn't get it wasn't an important game. <laughs> That's Tampa Bay's 
Tampa Bay in 2010. I mean, that's not a big needle mover, dude. <laughs> yeah, what's what's not listed is on June 26, 2010, Edwin Jackson has Tommy John surgery. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you know that he's, uh, Edwin Jackson actually played for a lot of teams? I yeah. think, if Journey I'm not was. mistaken, he was still playing in 2019 at least, maybe oh even gosh. 2020. Really? I think, yeah, I think he had another ten years on it, I, and I know this because I think he was on Washington, um, the Nationals, because I couldn't believe like he was still uh, pitching um, after all that. Because I remember we were actually uh, with our uh, Mister Excitement. It was his uh, bachelor party weekend, and we were in. Uh, we were driving. Uh, through Coney Island and and uh, Brooklyn, uh, we actually had dinner that night, and I think that's the same night that this happened. We were listening to the game, and uh, they were saying it was like he was going over like 140 pitches, but and he had he had walked a whole bunch of people. I was like, how is this still a no hitter? And yeah. it's, it's it's far from a perfect game, that's for sure. Right. But uh, he did it, and uh, yeah, it was a one nothing, one nothing. And I will add that. So he's actually 39 years old now. Think about that. So what? He yeah, he's 39 now. So he was, he debuted in Major League Baseball. It, yeah. So you're older than this guy, Jack. How about that? He turns he turns uh four. Actually, both you gentlemen, uh, Angelo and Jack, who recently turned 40. Um, Mr. Edwin Jackson turns 40 in September, but he actually debuted in Major League Baseball in 2003. His last MLB appearance was 2019 with the Tigers. Yeah, wow. About that. wow. Tigers, yeah. The yeah. Tigers. One, yeah. two, three. Oh, my yeah, he gosh. Like a whole team, like 10 he, teams. He, he played with half the league. I yeah. mean, I, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, my God. He played with like at least 15 teams. What? The Tigers twice. Tigers is the only one I see as a repeat here. That's nuts. Was, was he on the uh, – was he on the tw uh, 2011? Seven Cardinals. Cardinals. Yes, he was. Yes, yeah, he was. he was in the World Series uh, team yep. for them. You guys ring. So right after this. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Jack, uh, we're we're super nerdy when it comes to this. Have you figured that <laughs> no, out? No, no. <laughs> I, mean, I did the research. You, I, knew, you don't, he, I knew he was going to know that when I did the research here. Like going, yep. you, you don't need to tell me, pal. <laughs> <laughs> this is the stuff that lingers in my head while I'm trying to figure out what I need to do uh, later sure. today. <laughs> sure. You're, you're like, how do I drive again? But in 2019, I saw Edwin Jackson <laughs> played with 14 different teams in Major League Baseball. <laughs> I so, forgot I was supposed to pick up my son. Oh, yeah. Ed, Edwin Jackson had a one nothing no hitter. Run. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kevin, when you're yes, over sir. there at Green Grove Retirement Community, where you reside, when you're you not at radiant, radiant theater retirement community <laughs> when you're not at radiant uh, oh do any of the other senior citizens get tired of hearing you talk about baseball <laughs> oh gosh yeah they locked me in a room by myself smart <laughs> <I'm being> solitary <laughs> solitary <dude. laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I'm right. not supposed to say that. That be, I might, I might get, my, I might get in trouble for saying that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you don't get an extra biscuit tonight. No more tapioca pudding for you, Gramps. Yes, you're gonna get, you're gonna get a uh, uh, what's called a towel party from the orderlies there. Oh, <laughs> a towel party! Wow. Oh, we, we got range, baby. We got range. <laughs> uh, don't look party. it up, people. Don't look it up. <laughs> Please, right. not, not, not safe for work. Last but not least, June 26, 1970, Frank Robinson hits two grand slams in, in the same game, helping Baltimore beat the Senators 12 to 2, accomplishing the feat in consecutive at bats. The Orioles outfielder becomes the seventh major leaguer to hit two bases full homers in one game. Now, why did I pick this one? Of course, because uh, as impressive as that is, I was at the Fernando Tati Sr. Uh, uh, game when he hit two grand slams in one inning. So uh, impressive, Frank, uh, to hit two grand slams in one game. But uh, yeah, <laughs> no. not, not not quite cutting the mustard, Frankie. Yeah, no, no, no. quite. <laughs> For your Hall of Favor, but did you do that? No. <laughs> no, uh, Frank Robinson. Again, we we need to talk about his accomplishments so much right. more than we do. 
just an amazing, amazing player. All right, the first African American manager in baseball history. I still think the only man who's won the American League and the National League MVP award, right. but you only get two grand slams in one game. So, yeah, whatever. Yeah, he's five hundred home runs. Yeah, who cares? He only got two <laughs> grand slams in one game. Yeah, just just looking at his plaque here. I mean, like there there's. There's Hall of Fame. everything on there. But does it say two grand slams in one inning? No. It probably doesn't because you can't fit it on there with all the rest of his accomplishments. <laughs> yeah, I, I was yeah. going to say, like, yeah. so, like, a lot of these Hall of Famers have, like, accomplishments on here. This one looks like they totally, like, stuffed even more into there. Yeah. Like, yeah, so yeah they ran out of room. <laughs> yeah. I have to extend it a little bit more yeah. to get some more in there. Decrease yeah, that so, font. <laughs> yeah, so... Looking at looking at this picture, are the Orioles the only team that have a baseball hat on their actual baseball hats? Ah, oh, that's a very good qu um, a very question. No, no, there's well, there's a team with a glove on there, Milwaukee. Uh, there's yeah, another, exactly like the Blue Jays do. The Blue Jays, no, they don't. They, you know, that's a really good question, <laughs> Josh. Awesome. Yeah, you might be on there. Boom! Stump Did, the baseball oh, nerds. Oops. I was to say, did the uh, Cleveland team uh, or the or the Braves? Did they have? No, a they did not. No. Okay. All right. No, sure. that's a very that's a good guess yeah. though. Cleveland team. Yeah, the Cleveland Guardians. I don't want to get canceled have it. if I if I call them Native Americans. <laughs> Why couldn't uh, they just answer to that? The Cleveland Native <laughs> Americans. Why couldn't you they know? This is this is where being a senior citizen comes in handy because we can just say, you know what, everybody, Kevin comes from a different time. <laughs> yes, at <laughs> least the Native Americans. Come on, that's true. That's true. That's true. Kevin still rever refers to the Civil War as the War of Northern Aggression. So, <laughs> no, the war between the states. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, and uh, Hawaii and Alaska were di were just they they weren't even involved in it at the time. So it's right. like yeah. Long before that. All right. So Kevin and I, uh, last Sunday, we did some hopping around. So uh, we wanted to take you through that a little bit and, and chart. This was our Sunday, which was a uh, Sunday fun day for sure. So Kevin, I'm going to start with um, a place that's actually close to where you live and uh, you frequent this place a it's lot. By the, it's by the Radiant Beer Retirement Community? Yes. Yes. Okay. Fair enough. So, so we're actually just going to go through, my gosh, yeah. like this is like the Anaheim tour here. If you want to go to Anaheim and you don't want to go to Disneyland, we can get a whole day of what to do here. So this is a sandwich shop in downtown Anaheim called Windsor Browns. They've been open like, around nine months or so. And they specialize in sandwiches. They have they have like sandwiches there all, all the time. They have specials. But also what attracts it, they usually have about 15 different craft beers on draft. And I'm not just talking local beers. Um, when we went, uh, Michael had a beer by Trillium from the East Coast, which is very, very rare to, to find out here. I asked them, I was like, how did you even get this? And it's like only the second or third time they've had it. And then I actually had a beer that I never had before by Cowboy Jack's favorite brewery, Toplin Goliath. But they also have like a great variety of styles of beers and stuff from like, I think they have stuff from other countries too, even. And yeah. Especially if you look at the to go, ooh, the to goes, they have some very expensive like bottles that come from Europe, the different yeah. kind of beers you want to get. Yeah, because I, I had the uh, the Fens uh, Hazy IPA by Trillium Brewing out of Ohio. Uh, you had the Electro Dino Boogie from Toppling Goliath uh, yep. out of Iowa. And again, they they have like how many beers on tap? Maybe like twelve. I let me see. It, uh, sixteen. Oh, from looking yeah, 16. at the picture there, see the yeah, picture. I see. I see the, the in the background there is is each one, and they they. It seems like every week when you go, they'll have new stuff out there, and they usually have one or two specialty sandwiches every week. And we had, yeah, there we go. There's our break. There was our brunch sandwich right there. Take a look at that bad boy. That was some good stuff. Oh my excellent, God. excellent sandwiches at Windsor. Oh, Road, that's true. Sure. Yeah, Angelo. Uh, Angelo's had sandwiches for them as well. Oh okay. yeah. Before he moved yeah, out, the, I told. Yeah. You get you got sick of me talking about this place, so you had to go try them out. <laughs> yeah, the oh, best egg, the best egg salad sandwich I've ever had. Yeah, yeah really? Yeah, uh, it's, yeah, it's it's called the Devil Made Me Do It. Yep, it's a little bit has a little bit of a spicy kick, but this egg salad sandwich. So, uh, right where they split the sandwich, they split a soft boiled egg. 
So Ooh. when you bite into the sandwich, you get a little bit of that runny egg. Uh, excellent, excellent sandwich. So I got yeah. I got to check it out. There's yeah. also I another know. one. So, so yeah, cause we we tried it once uh, at my work with my coworkers, and it was a hit. So we had it several times. The other favorite sandwich uh, amongst the group was the Oklahoma sunset oh, sunset yes, yeah which sunset. is like a it's a grilled chicken with like pesto it's awesome so yeah when, if you're in the anaheim area windsor browns go check it out great craft beer on tap and great sandwiches as well yeah they're open tuesday through sunday i think till eight o'clock uh tuesday through saturday mm -hmm. and six o'clock on sunday so yeah if you're in the area it's over it's in downtown anaheim pretty close to city hall and about maybe like quarter of a mile or so from the packing district, which is like a popular area that we went to later on in the day. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah. I'm going to have to try it out. Typically I get my egg salad where I get my sushi from the gas station down the corner, <laughs> but I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot right. for sure. Oh, you, you are the galloping gourmet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the galloping I know how to live. Gourmet. I know Dude, how to live. Man. The new nickname, the Galloping Gourmet. I'm going to add that to the list. <laughs> uh, so good. So so Kevin and I were kind of debating, like, do we go? Because we were going to see the Angels and Mariners. And uh, so we said, like, okay, so do we just go straight to the stadium or what do we do? And, of course, we went to a place that that is an old haunt of ours. And actually, when we first started getting back into baseball and doing the brewery thing, Noble was our go-to place. Uh, we would park there and um, do pre-gaming there. And uh, Kevin, we had some great stuff there. Uh, you know, they have great beers just in general. The the legacy beers that we know from before, like the Big Wig West Coast IPA, uh, Nose Candy, Aim for the Fences, Naughty Sauce is another one that's a golden milk stout uh, on nitro. Um, but we we actually you actually had. Um, it's like, actually, waka waka. Waka. it's like a waka waka, like yeah, because like it's like a IPA with wakata hops, and I right. believe you went for the big wig, which is like their year round IPA, right? You know, again, the big wig, right? Yeah, and then there was another yeah, one, called puff, yeah, puff puff pass. Yes. So wait, what? Naughty, what? Hold on, hey, relax, Jack. <clears throat> so the naughty sauce, like it's it's kind of like a sweet like milk stout. So because that became so popular, made variations of it. There's one called the cinnamon roast crunch. Which is pretty much cinnamon added to the to the uh, to the base of the naughty sauce. It does smell like cinnamon toast crunch, and I've had that before and really liked it. I tried a little taster of the of it's called Puff Puff Pass because it's Cocoa Puffs version. Of, sorry, Jack, to disappoint you. It's a Cocoa Puff version of the uh, the naughty sauce, and uh, we've talked about this beer on the show before. I've had it. Michael's had it. This is their baseball beer. Aim for the fences. In different colors, if you get the cans to go, you can get in Padres colors, Dodgers colors, or Angels colors. Man, on your seat. Yeah. So, Kevin, out of all the times you've drank the uh, the naughty sauce, yes. What's your favorite thing about the naughty sauce? That's naughty. Perfect. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Perfect. That's the in-depth reporting that we're yeah. known for. That's and the. <laughs> so we are hard driving journalists. Mm -hmm. Hard driving. Well done, Kevin. You're welcome. <laughs> And this place always does help a special place in my heart because this actually is the first brewery I actually was really going to on a regular basis. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, back in around 2010 or so. I knew one of the original owners. So I was I was going here early when it was just like barely getting going. And all of a sudden, a few when, years later, I was like, whoa, they made it. When you <laughs> kids didn't know nothing about craft beer skis, Kevin was there on the front lines with Noble Ale Works fighting yeah, 20, the good About fight. 2010, 2011, yeah. Yeah. And then, that was, and then that was at fighting. least 13 years ago. Then we started finding out about their great beers like Hazer Ramon um, <laughs> and uh, the Dudley Death Hop. Uh, the wrestling tie-ins, which was going to come in later to our when we go, when we talk about the beer later on the show here. That's, that's right. Easy. That's right. So, uh, and Angelo, have you have you got a chance to go to Noble over the years? Yes, actually, um, Michael took me to Noble before an Angels game a number of years ago, right. um, and this was actually the probably the first real craft beer that i had mm -hmm. um and i believe um mongo you got me aim for the fences is what you got oh so, probably most likely yeah, yeah. It, it's so, been around for several years and it only got started getting canned last year yeah so i had um uh i didn't know what what to get or what to pick so michael was like i got it and uh 
you grab that and it was uh because you i mean b- back then it was what what's the lightest you got right that was my always always my response right, right, right. but but this one is not messing around it's like a seven nine or something crazy yeah. like that it, it, <laughs> yeah. this one does not mess around yeah, and i will add too so part of the appeal is we mentioned it briefly but you park there for free and you walk to angel stadium it's about mm-hmm. yeah. maybe 15 minutes once you get to the actual gate which mm-hmm. still you park in the parking lot it's going to take you almost 10 yep. minutes to walk from the parking lot to get inside the stadium. Yeah. And, most, you'll most, say, and you'll get easy, out. You'll walk to your car exit. and easy get exit. out before mm-hmm. you're even out of the parking lot probably. Right. And I'd even say if you're a my Anaheim Ducks fan, sorry, I almost puked in my mouth. Um, you also <laughs> can walk to the, um, I was going to say the pond, but I think it's the Honda still, still the pond. Still the pond. Always it's always the pond. pond. That's always known as. But yeah. the Honda Center where the Ducks play, you can also walk over there. For that, or if there's ever like you know concerts there, or heck, WWE probably still goes there. You know what I mean? You can yeah. always park there, and walk over there as well. It's a little bit further of a walk. I'd say it's about three quarters of a mile to get to maybe a mile to get there. But still, you have to deal with the parking and you park for free. Yeah, and they were remember they were giving us uh, incentive to come back yep. after the game. Yeah, yep. uh, there was a two for one special. So uh, That's again, they, they just started last last year. So if you cut, yeah, they give you a coupon. It's like, hey, if you're coming back later, here's a coupon. If you go back after the seventh inning, you can get two a two for one. I'm like, that's not bad. That's cool. Noble Hill works doing a two for sign me up, oh, daddy. Exactly. Yeah, after the game, you get yeah. Yes. But, Good stuff. Uh, yeah. Good people. Good people. Hey, let's get to baseball. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Kevin wearing his Gilligan uh, City Connect hat that he got uh, for free at one of the games, right? So yes, yeah, yeah, recently, and my Otani son shirt that I got a gift from uh, Charlie Guzzle. Uh, you know, there you Thanks, go. Jack. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is uh, I think the last game I went to was last year, and it was an Angels game. Um, and uh, so this is <laughs> I haven't been to a lot of major league games. I've been to more minor league baseball games yeah. than, than major league. Um, so again, it's, I was surprised about how many people were there on a Sunday. Yeah. Um, Killer turnout. Love to see yeah. that. Yeah. There was, um, on the sides, if I had, if you could, I did a pan of this, but it's like, a, you know, great crowd. And by the time we sat down, it was three, nothing, which I'm sure as angels fans, I'm sure you guys enjoyed that. And, um, but yeah, I thought I was going to, I was like, great. It's going to be four, three Mariners, like within five minutes after I sit down. This this is my fourth game, and it, this is my fourth game, and I've already seen him lose three times, including the night before this with Phil. That was at the Angel game they lost. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Well, they you know they they're consistent. You know that's what we <laughs> love about the Angels the the consistency of. <laughs> when this is being recorded, they've won like seven out of their last eight, and yeah. I was at the one they lost. All right, so <laughs> the cooler they call you. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah it was uh just a beautiful day and uh otani went three for five with three singles and uh speaking of otani so we always try to pick up something that you know anybody can talk about the game and and uh hey the angels won they beat the beat the mariners mariners next day one hit the uh uh, the Marlins uh, in Seattle, but like, hey, we could talk about baseball. Let's talk about Shohei Otani, uh, one of one of our favorite players. But w- I saw this, I saw this little thing on the scoreboard, and it's a little hard to figure out. So I'm like, Kose, um, and I, I, I it, it nothing makes sense here. Like, what is this? Is this like a Michael Jordan perfume thing? Is this, you know, is this? What's going on here? But yeah, so um, and we went to, to the stand of set, and it's actually like um, it's uh, skin cream. So if you want the the beautiful skin of Shohei Otani, you're gonna get this. And Kevin has the free sample. I, that's why I just got up. I, I think I'm gonna put some on me right now. Yeah, have have a, right? yeah let's have a live application. <laughs> yes. yes. Hang on. I'm totally I'm totally discombobulated right now because I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Let me get, I mean, I got one earbud on, but here we go. Here's the card. Okay. And it's, it says, experience the power of Japanese innovation and quality. Sekisei Emulsion, a high-performance, lightweight moisturizer that helps protect, hydrate, and smooth skin. Who I see five stars here. Light, not greasy, and smooth on the skin. I'm giving you reviews here. Five stars. Totally worth it. Discover it for yourself. Good for all skin types. Who even me? Because I'm old, and I'm always dead. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The key ingredients are oh, I like on the back here. Once you take this little thing off, hopefully, 
Oh my goodness, is that Kevin? Our Kevin, old man? Be, I'm not be sure. Off. Kevin, be sure it to put the ingredients and pictures of what they are. There you go. So it has uh, what the heck is koi C O I X cedar extract? It brightens and moisturizes. And helica extract it brightens and hydrates. Uh, Melatheria extract which moisturizes and oh gosh, just pronouncing this is fun. Ella campaign extract it brightens and moisturizes. All right, let's put some of this on and. I'm going to feel like a new human being, Jack. So I, I've recently started a, uh, a daily moisturizing routine. Uh, okay. After spending a lot of years out in the sun working, I realized the damage I was doing to my skin. And I think it's very important. So from the Baseball Brew Crew, we do we are pro-moisturizing. Not, and uh, I like it. I'm just is it is it a Kevin? Is it a cream or a yeah. gel? Because I found that my yeah. skin responds more to moisturizing gels than it does creams. It looks like oh, it, it looks more like a gel, sir. Okay, perfect. I know. Perfect. I, I, I'm going. I thought it was gonna be thicker. It's pretty thin, so I'd say it's more of a gel than a cream. By the yeah, you want you want to get it. Yeah, get oh, it up on the T zone. Get that, get that T zone, and uh, Kevin, you have combination skin, so be sure to make sure that. <laughs> <laughs> to really work it in. Yeah, you need to work that moisture. You can't just slap it on and go. You really need to work it in and get it. I'm not, there's, a, there's still some left in here. Am I supposed to put this? Where else? God, get it, get it on the face. Get it on the face. Work it into I the face. I already did get on the face. Hang on, man. All right, all right. Can we move on here? Don't we have a? Do we have more to do? <laughs> you know, we know on YouTube are very excited watching this. The people who are listening to this on audio are even more excited for yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're. About <laughs> yeah, no, don't forget to tune in next week and listen to us apply more or more moisturizer. You know what? This is pretty nice. It's pretty nice. I don't know where I can find this, but. There you, you know, go. Well, uh, well, you can. Get, get it, it, and you're gonna have to go back to more games and get some samples so you can get yeah. like the rest oh. of the, the six days a week. Yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a QR code right there that you can scan to learn more. I bet you'd you find go. out how to order it. There you go. There you go. So, so a bo course. so a bottle of that moisturizer can be found online at Walmart.com for oh. $54.99. Oh, wow. Wow. Nice. wow. I want, if, I if, if Tony if was did. on this card, I'd probably go sell on eBay for a few bucks. That's true. <laughs> Why wouldn't they lean into putting him into a baseball outfit here? They 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 had to get his glamour shot from when yeah. he was a high schooler. Like yeah, they had to show but off that. Uh, you see the, the, you see that yeah. beautiful yes. skin. My like, gosh, I feel like that blue. I feel really like makes I'm. Skin pop, you know? I yeah. feel like <laughs> about five hundred years younger. Thank you, Jack. Nice, dude. You look good. You look good. Yeah, not a great. day. Not a day over ten thousand. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. No, yeah, no, I, no I, filter. Wow. You look good, nope. Jim. You look good, Jim. <laughs> but uh, the one thing that we did see when we were at Angel Stadium was uh, they, they actually have a cool display that uh, that we saw on there. So I got some pictures of that. Um, we've been there before where they had Otani's, what was it, his, uh, his Rookie of the Year award? Yeah, um, yeah, they've had different awards like that. Yes, sir. Yeah, so they have some really, really cool uh, memorabilia in this in this uh, display. Do you have, a, do you, have do you want to get Jack brought up? Do you have a photo of uh, the Trout Awards? Do you have that in there? Or do I just tell? Oh, I do, I do actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll put up to that. But yeah, look yes. at that. There's the hat and there's like some really that jersey is from the 2002 World Series champions. So that's yep. a nice little bonus here. And yep. also the trophies on the actual World Series trophies on display in another part of the stadium. I believe. Oh gosh, is it? I think it's on the field level around home plate. I want to say I don't remember for sure. Yeah. This is on the it's terrace. Cross store, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is on the terrace level, which uh, around like I don't know, like two twenty, two fifteen, two twenty, something like that. Yeah. I want to get Jack fired up. You see that war, Jack? Yeah. The two things that I don't like about it: Kennesaw Mountain Landis and Mike Trout. Oh, oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> What we, we're not allowed to share? I thought this was a trust tree. We can't share our opinions <laughs> here. Oh, I mean, uh, Michael, should I? You want me? You want me to stir the pot a little bit? Sure. About what I didn't see. What all of a sudden was it on all these accolades? Do you have? Do you, I, we noticed there was a lot of no hitters being mentioned on displays. The one that mysteriously, yeah, there's Bobolinsky. We talked about him before. Wow. Yes. So think about that. They have a Bobolinsky one. But one they don't talk about happened, and Angela was there. 
the one after the uh, one in honor of uh, Tyler Skaggs. That one, I don't know if now I'm like, is that mean they are, they're trying to erase the whole Tyler Skaggs thing from history because of what actually happened with him? Which sure. is so unfortunate what happened. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, they're trying to really just sweep that under the rug. Oh, Angels. Yeah, well, no with, the, with the rich history that the Angels have, they can't bring out all the accolades at <laughs> once. You know, they got to rotate. I'm sure it's on a schedule. <laughs> okay. Fair enough, sir. Fair enough. Um, so after the game, uh, we told you before in our craft beer segment, but we did stop it at Monkish. We actually got some, uh, some curry, uh, uh, udon, uh, over by next to Windsor Browns, but then we walked over to Monkish and like, I can't tell you there's a, we, we had a, a choice of some great breweries and we wound up at Monkish and I'm so glad we did. Uh, again, I can't put them over enough. They they ha- they really really take craft beer to an, the, the next level. I don't even know how to explain it uh, properly. Um, and having- I would say this is not for someone who's a casual beer drinker, correct? For sure, because you walk in there and there's a lot of like uh, double. You'll see DDH, DIPA, and a lot of stuff is is strong, like. Even Cowboy Jack Strong, is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Most of the stuff are, is like double IPAs. You'll see a lot of like high percentages, different kinds of styles of beers. And it's just like, well, you're not just going to go in there and be like, hey, let me just get a, a Pilsner or a lager. I think they have like one Pilsner or one lager on the board. But I'm like, that's not what you're going to Monkish for. Dude, you know that's I mean? how you root. That's how you root out the, the rookies, man. Somebody orders the pills. Hit the yeah. bricks, pal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, um, so you love the beer you have. Like I actually ordered the beer first that he had that he actually had on the show tonight, and like I was like, here trying to sip this, and you just I just see his eyes, so just, whoop, <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. oh my gosh. I got the West Coast Sunset IPA. Mm-hmm. That was uh, that's really the one good. in the back there. It's tremendous. Uh, but the yeah, the story walking like it was. Tr- oh my god, like it's just mind blowing. I said it was it was it's so creamy and so like uh, just perfection in a glass. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic. Love it. But we actually, the reason why we went to Monkish was get, before you move on, no, no, because no. I don't think you have, photo, do you have a photo of my other beer. No, I, don't, I don't have a photo of it, but I, but, but let me, I, I got to talk about this, this beer, this one of the weirdest beers I'd seen. So I saw this on the board. And I'm like, I think I have to get this. So the name of this beer is called space cookie. Hmm. So, and it's actually made with, Something called Omnipoyo, which is like some like a guy who does like a microbrewery out of like Sweden. I couldn't really find out much about this guy. So let me describe this beer to you, Cowboy Jack Durango. It's our special cookie double IPA with cookies, vanilla, vanilla beans, and milk sugar. And like I said, it was a collaborative project with um, what did it say? It was uh Omnipoyo imagining a special edible dark cookie double IPA. Wow. So it actually contained dairy as well. And I was like, that is just so, and it's like 8.3. If I remember. Yeah, 8.3. And I was like, oh, I got to try this. Like, Michael's looking at me like, no, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know what? I don't care. I got to just try this. And I'm like, not my favorite beer, but I was like, well, it, like it, the smell is just fantastic. And I'm just like, whoa, this is so yeah. trippy. It was super. I didn't it love it, but I still sweet. liked it. It was definitely smelled so sweet. Yeah, yeah, it was it was ridiculously sweet. I'm sure people would love it, but it's just again, it's, I I love. I still really liked it for sure. But it's I still did, very you know, good, but it was like, yeah, it was it, it definitely was a a, a palate. Uh, I'll say like a, 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 my palate took a hit when I did it. I'm like, oh, I better sure. not. <laughs> I am with seltzers. I can only do so many seltzers and sours because you know, you know, I usually yeah, just right. like, I'm still on my first. Look, usually if I'm doing a show, I'm already on like my second or third beer, and I'm just milking my seltzer tonight. Oh, we figured out how to keep you sober. <laughs> Whoops! Oh, Will you stop? Uh, well, you know, I had three before we, we came on because I knew true. I was on my seltzer tonight. <laughs> So the reason why uh, we actually made it to Monkish, we were actually we did not plan to go there. We were actually trying to go to a brewery that was actually just opening this weekend. And it's, it's been a little bit delayed, but um, we, we finally figured out that they had their grand opening this weekend. And that is Villains Brewing Company. And uh, we stopped there. And, and as we were walking from Monkish, we're like, actually, 
when we're walking past it before to go to dinner, we saw a huge line and we say like, there's no way we're going to wait like an hour to get in here. And yeah, we didn't know what was going to be and everything. So we're just like said, like, let's go eat, go to Monkish. We'll be fine. Well, if it, we can come back and, and check villains out. Great. We did. And, uh, the property is amazing. And it used to be Kevin, the uh, modern times, correct? Yes. It was a property called leisure town that, um, modern times put a lot of money into had all kinds of lakes because part of the attraction was going to be there actually had a pool on the property Ooh. and there's a there's that property and there's a house next to it, it looks at like old Anaheim house they converted into a cafe so they repurposed it did everything and the pool actually got covered so there's the pool now they covered it and put you know lit it up and just keep that over it and hopefully you know some people probably not going to be happy the pool's gone but you know, overall, it's probably going to be a lot less of a headache not having the pool available. Because one thing that would happen is when the modern times had the pool, you could not serve your beer in glasses. Everything had to be in cups right. because people were using the pool area, Ew. which is interesting. And they also were an exclusively vegan restaurant. And so they had all kinds of delays. And then COVID hit and they lost a lot of money. I mean, modern times, I, I mean, modern times really took it the last uh, yeah. year to 18 months. But this place just opened up um, and they opened up just uh, Friday before we recorded this. And the head brewer, his name's Brad. He actually used to work at Noble Ale Works, which is who he's the guy who is behind the Dudley Def Hop and the Hazel Ramon that we talked about earlier because he's a huge mm. wrestling fan. In fact, they had a beer that I was hoping to try. It was a double IPA called Snake Tycoon. And the description, it said... Yeah, we named that. We want to name this after Vince McMahon's recent look. If you saw Vince <laughs> with like the mustache, yeah. the nineteen like tens villains looking mustache, and I was like, oh, that that's really funny. He's like, yeah, we picture after he gets through one of his crazy workouts, you want this double IPA. So I, like, all right, cool. Let me go get. But unfortunately for me, they were out of that beer by uh, uh, by that time on Sunday night. Yeah, yeah, we because it's like Sunday at nine o'clock, and the place is still pretty packed. It was super, it was uh, totally yeah. packed. And then we got, uh, we did a thing, uh, pale, yes. uh, pale ale, which yes, is in which the, is back the background. There. Yep. Yeah. And then the obligatron hazy IPA. Yeah. And then you see on there, it says smoke and fire. Um, now they, they have a, a huge food selection as well. Right, Kevin? Yeah. So I guess you have an option. There's a chicken option. There's a pizza option. And oh my goodness, what was the third one? I'm spacing out. I was spacing out right now on what it was. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. But you, but you have like three different restaurants. There, I've done it as three separate restaurants you can get in the same place. So yeah. I don't know where the heck they have this giant kitchen because you look, it looks like every nook and granny is crowded with people drinking beer and eating food. So, wow. you know, and so they're part of a company called uh, Craft by Smoke and Fire, which has a few locations in and around the uh, LA Orange County area. And they actually actually have a restaurant literally right by where we started the that started the day Winsor Browns and they went in the beer industry here and they just opened up Bill's Brewing. It looks like they're gonna do great after this weekend. The beers were solid. I hope I can want to come back and try some more. Unfortunately, they didn't have anything to go where I would have had something on the show this week. Yeah, but I will for sure in the future. And they they have a huge property and they have like stuff like this, like all these kind of portraits of villains. Out yeah, there, cool. although they had, they had one, it was like they had Gwen Stefani on there. So I, is she a villain? Or, or, or were they celebrating? Know, it, was like, it, was like the, it was like a Welcome to Anaheim with like the orange. And <laughs> yeah. it, like, the yeah. and I'm like all right, but they, but they have a whole bunch of like cool yeah. uh, artwork like this all around. There was it was like a double uh, like a double layer, like a, a upper layer uh, yeah. of it's seating like a, and stuff like yeah. that. And then they have this house that's uh, tucked away that they said, you said that they were going to make something out of that, correct? Originally it was supposed to be planned to become a, like a high-end steakhouse. I'm not sure if that's going to happen now. Like I said, it used to be a cafe back when Modern Times was there, but, and it's a really cool looking old house. I hope they do something where they not just like gut it out or whatever. I mean, for all I know, they might be using that for like the kitchen because we went, it was just closed. So we'll see mm -hmm. what happens in the future with that. But it's a really cool looking spot. Um, uh, one thing I would warn you about is if you're going to go on a weekend, give yourself a little extra time and be willing to walk because there is like the parking lot is very small and there's only street parking around the area. Otherwise yeah, a lot of residential parking. So yes. definitely be aware of that. Also the taps, uh, all of them oh, yeah. have different uh, type of like villains on, on top of it. It's super cool. Yeah. 
like uh, stormtroopers and and you know other kind type cool. of heads on there. Super yeah. super amazing. So definitely check it out. Villains Brewing Company in Anaheim, California. All right. Uh, so that is the show for tonight. Uh, we're on all the socials. We're on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube, uh, tw- uh, Twitch, and TikTok. Um, guys, any last words before we sign off for this week? They call us the crown jewel of craft beer and baseball, the Diamond Exchange. Every week we're bringing, we're keeping baseball history alive. We're teaching you about new craft beers and uh, bringing our own little sense of entertainment and humor to it. We appreciate you joining us for the ride. You're welcome. Thank you guys uh, for tuning in to another episode here. Uh, Thank you for all your support and uh, we will catch you on the other side. All I can add is uh, follow me on Lock and Low, L O K L O L L, because I'm going to be a busy man coming up. I'm going to be in and around LA and Canada in the next few weeks. You can see baseball stuff, wrestling stuff. Who knows what I'm going to get into? A lot of fun. I know that much. Nice. Nice. Well, we'll see you next Tuesday for another Baseball Brew Crew podcast. Good night, everyone. Take care.